Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Meher, and I'm currently working as a product manager at Google. Uh, so today I want to just uh, talk about uh, creating a product strategy, some kind of uh, experiences on how creating it, like some kind of guidelines as well. Uh, a brief uh, intro about myself. So I started my career as an R&D engineer for HP. Um, I'm working for imaging and printing enterprise software. Uh, I did my MBA because I was very fascinated about uh, building products, managing products, and so on, like features for products. So uh, I, I worked for Sling um, as a product manager for cloud services earlier. Uh, then I moved to Logitech, where we built the first Harmony Express, which, which is the first universal remote with Alexa built in. And uh, currently, I work for Google uh, as a product manager for Cast and Chromecast. I also want to uh, tell a disclaimer here. Uh, that whatever I'm going to discuss now is all based on my experiences. It's not like something that is practiced, especially with one of these companies. Like it's actually an experience built, uh, experience driven guidelines more than anything. Okay, uh, I know I want to start with product strategy, but you know what? There are a few things which we need to discuss uh, even before going further. So you hear a lot of these terminologies, like you know your mission. What is your mission statement? Like what is your vision statement? Uh, what is the product strategy and so on. I just want to clarify a few things before we go forward. The first thing is uh, we do have an aspiration, like our aspiration is our mission statement and the vision. So where do we want to see our product in five years is a vision. Uh, and you see your product roadmap and execution, like, you know, this is how I want to go there. And that's the, that's the execution part of it. Uh, your roadmap is like guiding principles. Strategy is the how part. So how do you achieve your vision is the strategy side of it. So strategy compromises a, lot, compromises a lot of things, basically, which we'll actually go into detail. Uh, but this is, this is what I want to mention um, clearly here, that the difference between mission and vision. Uh, another thing which I want to say is uh, there might be uh, if a few companies with mission statements, uh, but if you're building a product from scratch, like for a startup, uh, you need to build the mission statement as well. So for some companies, some established companies, you might already have the vision statement and you are building a product vision around the mission statement or building a product tying up to the mission statement. Uh, we'll, we'll discuss in detail. So I want to start with the uh, product vision, especially because I think this is what we hear a lot and uh, this is the core part of our product strategy. So I want to clearly uh, discuss this right now and then we can actually go in detail later. So product vision or product vision statement uh, describes the overarching long-term mission of your product. Uh, vision statements are aspirational and communicate concisely where the product hopes to go and what it hopes to achieve in the long term. So I think it's clearly articulated here, but your product vision is where you want to be, uh, a long-term vision. Long-term is probably, uh, we cannot explain like, you know, how many years is exactly long-term. Like some sometimes it is three years itself is a long-term, um, like in, and some sometimes it's like five years. Uh, like space, for example, long term is like, you know, long, really long term, like whatever NASA is doing or SpaceX is doing, like going into Mars or something, that's a long term thing. Uh, whereas uh, there are some ever changing fields, like, you know, in fintech, uh, where your long term is not like five years, probably three years itself is a long term. So they're different things, different stuff. So product vision should be clearly articulating and guiding everyone. Where do you want to build the product? And so where do you want to take the product? And how do you build the product? So this gives the guidelines to everyone who are building the product. So a few examples of product uh, vision, uh, I want to clearly say here something else. And there is no right or wrong way to uh, say like, this is my vision. Uh, some companies and some products tend to say it in like in a single liner, uh, which is clearly articulation, uh, like Google search, organizing world's information. Uh, Google pay is a safe, simple and helpful way Oculus, now meta, but it's also the same thing. Like our, our mission is to enable people to have meaningful interactions regardless of physical distance. And there are certain companies which, which they actually explain more uh, because they want, to, they want to give more details. DJI, you can actually go into, you can read through here. Uh, this is something which I got from their website, but um, then you see the last one where you see, we believe that reinventing the camera represents our greatest opportunity to improve the way people live and communicate. We contribute to human progress by empowering people to express themselves, live in the moment, uh, learn about the world and have fun together. So can you actually guess like which one it is? Three, two, one, and this is uh, snapping. 
So this is completely different, right? Like Snap, we generally think about a messaging app, but they are they re reinvented themselves as a camera company when they actually introduced spectacles. And this is the vision. So they actually uh, are trying to grasp the core part of uh, the sharing and messaging experiences. So this is an experience-driven um, vision statement primarily. We can talk about that later. Uh, so that's what is my point. So your vision statement actually tries to provide details to everyone who is working on the product. So it is important for us to define and articulate a clear product vision. So how do we come up with a strategy? So there is, it's not like there is a framework. I mean, there are definitely so many frameworks and it doesn't mean that you need to follow a specific framework to come up with a strategy. There are a few things which you need to uh, check into and probably uh, create some guidelines in order to arrive at a strategy. So that's what I want to explain here. Uh, so the first thing is on focus area. Uh, so it's it's actually huge. Like every domain is actually huge. Like fintech is huge. You need to have like a, a specific focus area. If you're talking about renewable energy, for example, it's a lot, right? I mean, renewable energy is a lot. Like you want to make uh, earth greener. That's a Tesla statement. But the product which came up is like cars, right? So that's one way to achieve your mission statement. So there are like uh, different focus areas, even in a single domain, uh, FinTech, like you have payments, you have uh, BNPL, buy now, pay later, or um, Visa, so many things, right? So it's better to focus uh, on a particular area where you wanna actually take it to the next level. Uh, and the next one is problem. So there are problems in each and every area, or you can actually consider it as uh, improvements. So every stakeholder involved in a journey actually has some problems. So we need to come up with some issues and understand like, you know, how we should take it forward. Uh, that's that's something which we'll discuss again in detail. Uh, value prop, like what's our value prop? Like what, what should be, what, does it make sense to business? Does it make sense to market? Like we should also think in a data perspective, like everything we should have some data, like if not, let's try to do some UXR, some studies and those kind of things. How do you get data is another completely different part. Uh, so as product vision, we spoke about uh, this now, it's a long-term vision. Sometimes you don't have enough details right away to come up with a product vision. So you actually think in your focus area, try to understand your problems and you're trying to provide some solutions. And that's when you probably come up with a product vision. So that's why it's, it's like two different things. If you're building a startup, you might actually come up with a product vision only when you understand like where you wanna focus on. Uh, whereas uh, established companies and established products, you know where you want to take it and then you actually define all the strategy and roadmap towards it. Situation and challenges. This is also another important point where uh, we need to really understand the challenges. I think we need to have the holistic picture. It doesn't mean that you need to go, go back, like go back on your decisions or anything like that. It's basically saying this is our situation. These are all the challenges. There might be like environmental challenges or business challenges or so, so many other different challenges, but understanding the holistic picture of a segment is really, really important here. And the last one, uh, core principles and values. Uh, I'm combining these into one. So every product has some principles uh, that actually articulate uh, different stakeholders who are participating in the product development to align in a direction. So your principle can be like, you know, simple, simplicit, simply simplified design, for example. So that can be a core principle. So you don't want to make it complicated anywhere. Uh, values and ethics are a different part altogether. So we should also consider from an ethical standpoint all the time, which is what I guess uh, it's better to start right from the beginning. Uh, like privacy can be a value where you want to focus on all the time. Let's let's go into details. So focus areas. How do you come up with a focus area? Um, as we spoke earlier, uh, target area. Like there are so many areas within the domain itself. Uh, renewable energy we spoke about, or payments we spoke about. Uh, entertainment, uh, like entertainment can be anything, right? So Netflix is one type, like which is over the top content. Or uh, live TV is another, gaming is another. So every area has different. So have some focus, uh, like your entertainment Xbox, for example, they're only focusing on gaming. And they, are, they also have some focus on video, video streaming. Audience is nothing but your customer segments. Who is our target audience? Like uh, it's not just seeing like who are using our product. Uh, it can be many, uh, like other stakeholders. We can take Airbnb as an example. Uh, their audience are both hosts and guests. We will discuss in detail uh, on how do we achieve customer segments and how do we find which are relevant. Then what's your market? Like, you know, uh, which market are you really focusing on? 
the reason why we need to have a focus on market as well is because there are different regulations in different uh, different markets right um and also the way customers or users use a product is actually different in uh, different markets uh, like people how they use in china is probably different than how they use in india payments is an example like how payment is uh, uh, a qr code in india is pretty common but not in the us so how do you determine like even for google pay like if they want to make it simple the market is actually really important so the features actually tie up to that market and whether the product can launch in that market or not is something important um another thing which i want to say like linkedin is an example right so it came out of uh, china right now like some products only exist in uh, various other markets but not in other other regions because of different regulations or anything else so it's i think it's important to understand market last one uh, strengths even though i mentioned only strengths i think it's important to focus on swat like you need to understand your strengths weaknesses opportunities threats in that area uh, yes it's a framework but i think it's a clear framework that actually gives us what, how to understand uh, the market and the focus area as well uh, and also think about why should we focus in this area like if you're talking about payments why should we focus only on payments and also in the specific target area like why should we focus only on uh uh you know buy now pay later uh, like f home for example so why do we need to focus only on that uh, so those are the things time in neo banking uh, why does why do we focus on you know neo banking like we do have banks everywhere why do we need a new banking system that actually focuses on new users snap for example why, why do we need to focus on a particular segment which is uh, camera technology like why do we need to focus on imaging and so on so there are different things let's actually think about strengths weaknesses and also why do we need to focus on this so uh, problem is something which we really need to think about i think the product exists uh, for two various reasons one is improving a certain user journey or probably there is a problem where we want to come up with a solution right like evs for example uh, the problem it's more an improvement than a problem but they also tied up problems in order to come up with a holistic product so the improvements are you do have this gas based uh, uh, cars right now which which is which evs are also the same thing right now we have we have market for both uh, for a gas based car um like the, the improvement from a gas gas based car to an ev is primarily focusing on renewable energy right like using your renewable energy or probably less emissions those are the those are the improvements uh those are the those are the focus areas there at the same time if you see an experience uh, in tesla uh, it's the full screen experience like the entertainment and all those things they're all improvements so the reason why i'm saying is we identify the problem which is emissions here in the case of ev uh and improvements for example the uh, the in car entertainment system so there are improvements and there are problems focus on those how do you how do you get those by understanding the customer journey which i'll actually discuss in the next slide also going through each and every part of the customer journey and actually be in their shoes and trying to understand it next is assessing the journey getting all the stakeholders involved like think in every possible situation uh and the last one is listing down all the problems as what we see and prioritize accordingly like okay this is an important problem like uh, for tesla for example uh, emissions is a big uh, thing in the car industry auto industry so that's the first problem uh, and then entertainment will be the second part if you consider as the priority so th this is how we want to actually prioritize so let's the come up with some metrics as well identify the parameters that are important for prioritization uh and do the exercise on prioritization uh and come up with that uh, experience i would say this is an example customer journey i want to i want to go over uh, at a high level because this is something important in defining the whole uh, strategy in general so if you see the customer journey here uh it's not about booking so let's say i want to go on a holiday um of course booking flights is part of it but if i'm going on a holiday there are a lot of things that i need to consider as a customer or as a user like i how, where should i go uh, like what what am i inspired about like should i go to hawaii like what am i inspired about like is it like water sports uh, what uh, something else uh, there i do my research uh, then i book my flights and we are not we are not ending there right so you are on the property like you also need to think about hotels for example like what's your stay in the hotel like how is it 
uh, and post day like how do you communicate airbnb does this in a fashion where it is uh, very very helpful like airbnb considers booking research uh, on property as well like how do you get your access how is the cleanliness within your home stay uh, and post day like leaving a review to your host for example or probably to the guest so there are like different things airbnb focuses on so it actually airbnb considered every part of the customer journey and they they wanted to uh, improve every section there kayak for example they started it as uh, a booking site uh, where it's like an aggregator because they understood the problem that you know booking different uh, booking and flight from different websites is actually hard so i need an aggregated site where actually i get details of pricing around or across different websites or different providers so that's how they actually pivoted into uh, flight booking and then they they actually added all other things like experiences later so th- this is how it is so they identified a problem and they tried to be in the customer shoes at that point like here it is a traveler shoes and they try to improve it whether it is airbnb or kayak or anyone so create a customer journey roadmap like what are our goals what are our activities what are the various touch points in the whole customer journey also identify what are the kpis right uh, this is also another thing which is important sometimes uh, like at least not now earlier when you want to book certain thing like there are like multiple steps that needs to happen in order to book a flight like 10 steps to get that now it's so simple so straight forward uh, same same in another example for a kpi uh, like easy access or you know the time to book or the number of steps that actually needed to book something uh, amazon did that in a right way like one click purchase right so you don't want to go through all the steps because you are doing the repetitive acts uh, acts so kpis are also another important part which we need to consider here uh, the next is uh, value prop i think that's another important part uh, not going into details we already spoke about customer right now so identifying a customer is important same is the case with business does it make business sense does how does it actually help our business so let's say if you are coming up with a hardware product uh, the solution for a customer problem is a hardware product does it really make sense to our business that's that's a question which we need to answer uh, then the product market fit uh, like is it really uh, good to focus on the market right now like does the product really need is needed by this particular segment or particular market all those kind of things so the last one is differentiation how is it different so it it doesn't need to be different all the time but having a differentiation is actually a good value prop because uh, your differentiation helps you to be uh, different from other partners or other competitors and it also gives you a cutting edge uh, sometimes you just improve some things um, where you don't really need to be different uh, and it actually comes with uh, different stuff like you know uh, reach marketing and all those kind of things like apple does it in a better way apple makes everything easy uh, if you compare with the differentiation aspect it may not be like your airpods may not be that different compared to other bluetooth headphones but the way they reach is in terms of marketing and reach they they do a different approach to get gain the value prop they actually focus on the experiences um yeah let's actually discuss in detail again so as we are speaking about experiences i think that's that's where it is important and we were speaking about apple i think it's a good example as well so yes i want a earphones or ipod for example was a great ex- great story yes i want uh, an mp3 player but what i really want is not an mp3 player i want something to listen to music uh, that's a good example where ipod was really really taken the market because of uh, good marketing and good outreach because they focused on experiences if i listen to ipod i actually have uh, an amazing experience uh, that's that's how they actually uh, considered same is the case with the skateboard right so yeah i want a skateboard but it's not like i want a skateboard i want i want an experience with the skateboard uh, same is the case with uh, shoes for example right uh, if you are defining designing shoes nike does it in the right way they're not just designing shoes they're designing shoes for different experiences like basketball shoes or golf shoes or something because the experience actually demands a different shoe for different things so it's important to focus on experiences uh, like what experiences will our help customers make progress they are seeking what obstacles might be removed and what are the social emotional and fun- functional dimensions of the job uh, so i think this is another thing which is important we need to think in all aspects like is there a social aspect to it is there an emotional aspect to it is there a functional aspect to it another another example which i want to bring up here is uh, snap again 
uh, why is Snap a camera company? Because they're actually focusing on experiences. They're not really focusing on uh, just building a messaging, building another messaging app. There have been already so many messaging apps earlier. Uh, they had they came up with a differentiation uh, with messages uh, only lasting temporarily. Uh, later, they realized it's not just messages, right? So you people started sharing images uh, since the evolution of messaging apps. So now the important part is uh, uh, how do you share a particular image? Like what are the parameters that are important in uh, image sharing? Um, and that's why they transform themselves into a camera company. Uh, Instagram is the same thing. So they focus on filters and so on, right? So because they're actually focusing on experiences, the experience is... Uh, like how the uh, how a particular situation is actually shared among friends or family or anyone else, uh, the, in, like a social life. And how do you feel emotionally after you shared something? How is it function? So this is something which is also another important one to consider. Whenever you are defining a value prop you or your experiences, you need to you need to consider experiences all the time. Yes, coming up with a product vision, uh, as I said earlier, uh, Analyze all the things what you have done, like spot customer journeys, value prop, JTBD, jobs to be done. So like think like what should be our product vision? Like where should our product be like in five years down the line? Um, as I said, like the experience from Instagram or Snap, uh, you want to be like uh, a photo sharing and photo uh, photos as the key value prop uh, in those. So five years down the line, I want to be a camera company. Uh, so that's why the vision actually changed. Uh, another thing which I want to bring up here is we spoke earlier, product vision can be, you know, right in the beginning, like where you know exactly what needs to be built um, or you're actually focusing on certain improvements and that's why you're coming up with the product vision at a later. So identifying the, val identifying the value prop, identifying the problems, identifying your strengths and then coming up with the product vision. Uh, Google Chromecast also the same thing. Like you know, we uh, it's it's a different ex it's a different example. The latest Chromecast with Google TV uh, has uh, uh, a Google TV which is a value prop for it. Uh, anyways, so what would you like to achieve long term is a question which you need to ask. And does it tie up to your company's mission? Does this vision make sense three five years from now? And sometimes in in in, in case uh, longer as well, right? Like uh, Facebook, for example, building communities. It's a long term vision. Uh, payment as well, PayPal, like whatever PayPal has done like a few years ago when they started is still now relevant because the vision of uh, pay me paying securely is something that makes sense uh, even now. I think uh, we spoke about challenges as well. So understanding a situation is key. We need to, we need to determine like what's our current situation? What's our focus area? Like how is the current situation in the focus area? Uh, like if you're talking about fintech, like what is the fintech? How does the landscape look like today? Uh, what is the problem there? Are, what, who are the players? All those things we need to ask. Uh, obviously, there is a framework for this as well. Uh, but instead, like just ask the basic questions. Uh, what are the challenges faced by users or customers? And we were speaking about this as well. And again, um, users or customers are not just people who are using the product, uh, like an end customer. Like Airbnb is an example, right? So your stakeholders are both. Uh, hosts and guests, and there can be many more. But thinking in both the angles is actually really important. Amazon is another example where uh, your your stakeholders are. It's a marketplace, so there are you know sellers and buyers. So what are the challenges faced by both? Like you cannot just solve uh, the buyer's experience, and if the if the seller's experience lag, then the ecosystem actually fails. Then the other challenges, uh, what you anticipate, like environmental challenges or political challenges, or you know, like there is no tech today. Um, driverless cars, when they started, lidar and all were not really uh, existing in a fashion where you wanted it in in the way for driverless cars. Right? So there might not be tech solutions to exist. Um, yeah, like even even when uh, the initial like 90s, if you see, there are some product ideas where the chips and chips do not exist. They actually defined and designed chips for that particular purpose. ML chips is another example now. So there, there are many things. So it might not be technical solutions today. So that can be a challenge. So depending on where you want to be and what's your mission, you need to come up with, uh, you need to understand the challenges and come up with a proposal. And if there is no solution, why doesn't exist a solution? Think in that aspect as well. Um, maybe it's not what market actually needed. Uh, GPUs, for example, it was only used for gaming. Now it is used in various other scenarios as well. 
uh, yeah, think think in another aspect. Uh, like again, Airbnb software example. So there was no um, there was no solution for you know renting your home in a in a fashion where it can reach to so many people. Uh, why didn't we have them at that point? Um, and I'm not saying like just think about challenges and you shouldn't step back. The reason why I'm saying to have challenges listed is to understand that these are the problems. Like Uber already was aware that there are environmental and political challenges when they enter into different cities, but they laid out a plan to solve that problem. And that's the reason why you have seen uh, it solved like in many cities. Of course, there are some problems in certain cities, but that's how it happened. So what? how should your product strategy blueprint be? It can be like many things, but I'm actually focusing on four different ideas. What's your problem statement you're trying to solve or probably how? what are the improvements you're making? Get data wherever you can. Uh, defend your problem statement. Uh, why it is very important, why it is focused and all those kind of questions. Then the second part is principles and values, which we spoke earlier. What are our core principles? Every product needs to have core principles uh, because the product development abides by the principles. Uh, once you go to the execution stage uh, where you question everything, like you know, if there is a new feature that comes, why should we do it in this certain way? You question about that. And that point, I guess, principles are the key things which actually drive you to a decision. What should be the ethical values of the product as well? Privacy, for example, is an ethical value. Green is an ethical value. Uh, like you, you want to use your energy only renewable, so that's a value. Like, of course, you use servers, but the servers need to go through renewable energy. That's another example. So your core principles and values are critical and important for a product. Then the target audience, which we spoke, like who are the target segments? I'm, I'm not saying like uh, uh, there will, they don't exist a product uh, without any specific target segment, or probably there can be pro there can be products that exist with. Uh, considering all target segments, it can be it can be like different ways, but in general, to have a particular segment focus is, is really helpful. Um, like Snap, are they focusing on end audiences? Uh, same is the case, like, uh, but, but there can be like products which are used by everyone, right? Like laptops, for example, it's used by everyone, uh, but having a focus area is important in order to determine the fashion where it is needed for a certain segment. Then the core CUJs, uh, CUJs are core user journeys, basically, uh, customer user journeys. So the core CUJs, uh, let's list down the core CUJs, uh, what the product should achieve, uh, come up with a ranking system to determine the important ones, uh, like identify the parameters that are important. This will be helpful for the roadmap. So th there are like so many ideas and features. Now you have a focus area, now you have a product vision, now you know what exactly are the problems. Um, this is just an example like where you have so many ideas, so many things. You can come up with some so many product ideas. Uh, you know, focus. Again, focus on something. Come up with that prioritization mechanism. You cannot build everything at the same time or you cannot build multiple products. Focus on the product which you are aiming at. Uh, that would help you to come up with a roadmap. So what's your five-year vision? Like what do you want to achieve in year one? What's your MVP? Like when, when will you come up with an MVP? What's the minimum viable product in order to help you get into that direction where you want. You cannot build everything in, in the year one, right? And But you need you need an MVP focus and then focus on other things like, you know, getting added uh, year by year or probably whatever timeline you're actually focusing on. So that's where your roadmap comes into picture. So converting a strategy into roadmap will get you to execution. I think just to recap, so what we have seen, what we have discussed is how do we achieve with a product vision and defining a strategy to come up with uh, a product roadmap finally. Um, so there are things which I actually explained about how do you focus on customers and roadmaps and journeys and all those things. I think that would be helpful in order to determine a roadmap. There can be various frameworks, uh, but these are certain things which we need to focus on. Uh, and uh, yeah, thanks for your time. Um, you can connect with me on LinkedIn or probably ping me on LinkedIn. So if you want to have, if you have any questions or anything, you know, uh, you can leave a message anytime. Thank you.